Good morning, Bible Baptist Church, and good morning to everybody who's joining us online. We're excited for Church Online this morning. Uh, we hope that you're ready with your families wherever you're watching. Take a minute right now to like the post, to share it with a friend. Comment below and let us know where you're watching and who's watching with you, and we're excited for our service this morning. Uh, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 20, it says this, giving thanks always and for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this morning, we want to start by doing that, by giving thanks to God for all that he's done. Try to live my life 
parted now until I died, there'd still be many more. If I could mention only one, I'd have to thank him for his son, and that's enough to praise the Lord for all he's done. For all he's done, I'm going to lift my hands to praise him for all he's done. Try to live my life to please him. Even though I don't deserve to live, my life has just begun, and I can't help but praise the Lord for all he's done. For all he's done, I'm gonna lift my hands and praise him for all he's done. I'll try to live. you're ready to sing with us this morning. We're excited to be able to worship the Lord from all over the city and all over the country. So let's lift our voices together and sing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, to my heart to sing Thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to. sing another song. Sing with us now as we sing, In Christ Alone My Hope is Found. In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of Fears are still when striving seas. 
going to sing one more song this morning. There's a lot of things in this world that we can want and we can desire and we think will bring us contentment. But the prayer of our hearts, and I hope the prayer of your heart this morning, is that we would rather have Jesus. So sing this with us this morning. I'd rather... so much for singing with us this morning. All right, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us here today, and I hope you're uh, excited about being here. Uh, we've had many good comments about what we're doing here um, at Bible Baptist Church and uh, online, and we're just excited about the opportunities that we have to be able to do this. Technology is a wonderful thing uh, unless something goes wrong, and we've had some things go wrong uh, already in the last couple of weeks, but nonetheless, we're doing our best, and uh, we are trying to uh, just do the best we can here in these times, and we're just excited that we have this opportunity, and I uh, hope you'll take your Bibles with me to Psalm 23 today, Psalm 23. And uh, in fact, if you look up, if you Google one of the most famous psalms, you'll come up with Psalm 23. And some of you could probably quote the whole thing. Some of you probably uh, have the whole thing memorized. So, um, but this is something that is uh, very interesting and something that the Lord has uh, touched my heart right now. I want you to do something. I realize we're online and I realize we're on Facebook. So how many of you are in your pajamas right now? If you're in your pajamas right now, just throw it in the comments. Yes, I am. Or hit the heart button or something. Do something to let us know in your pajamas because let's face it. Every single one of us likes to be comfortable. We all like comfort. We all like uh, sitting in our pajamas. I was talking to my brother yesterday, 
And he was saying, I have to tell you, I enjoy sitting on my couch for church. And so I can't blame you. I understand that. And so uh, we all enjoy that. But the funny thing is every single one of us has a different picture of what comfort actually is. For me, my picture of comfort is anywhere I can put my feet up. I don't know why, but I love putting my feet up. So that is my picture of comfort. I can be anywhere. As long as I get to put my feet up, I'm happy. But whatever your picture of comfort is, we all strive for that comfort. We all strive to be comfortable and as comfortable as possible. But the Bible here in Psalm chapter 23 gives us a picture of comfort, a picture of comfort. I want to read Psalm 23, and hopefully you'll read along with me. The Bible says this, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to be here this morning. And Father, it is our desire to learn something from your word today. And it's our desire to be closer to you today than we were yesterday and even last week. Father, I pray that today we would understand what this picture looks like, what, what your presence feels like, and what your presence does for us. Thank you so much for dying on the cross for our sins so that we can have a relationship with you that we can be close and lean knit to you. And as John 15 says, that we can abide in you. Father, we're just so thankful for that opportunity. We love you so much. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The very first thing I want to give you this morning is, number one, a beautiful picture. Again, let's just, with this in mind, read through verses 1 to 3 again. And just think in your mind what a beautiful picture this is. The Lord is my shepherd. Watch this now. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I want you to notice that key phrase there, I shall not want. There is nothing, understand this, there is nothing that God cannot give you. There is nothing that you could ever need that God could not provide for you. There's nothing. God, again, we've said this multiple times throughout these uh, online things, is the fact that God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns everything. He, he has everything. And understand this, God loves you so much that he wants to provide for you, that he wants to provide for all of your needs. He wants to give you everything you could ever ask or want. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, the Bible says this, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. It's about supplying your need. God wants to supply everything you ever had need of. God wants to give you everything so much so that you shall not want. Everything you have is at your disposal. But let me ask you this question. How does God keep us from wanting? How, uh, like all of us have wants, all of us want the comforts of life and all of those different things. But the Bible says very simply here, I shall not want. How, how does God keep us from wanting? Well, watch this. The next verse says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Now picture this with me. The sun is shining. The breeze is blowing. There's green grass all around you. It's a balmy, probably like 17, 18 degrees. You don't want it too hot, and it's not too cold. It's just beautiful out. It's extremely comfortable. And if you will, you can picture your family, your friends all around you, and just this is, you're, you're having a picnic. I mean, it is beautiful. It's a wonderful picture. God keeps you from wanting by supplying everything that you ever wanted. 
supplying all your needs. I mean, everything is beautiful. Everything is comfortable. Everything is amazing. But also notice the next phrase. The next phrase is this. He leadeth me beside the still waters. There's no shortage of food around you. There's no shortage of water. But I love how the Bible is so descriptive. The Bible doesn't just say, and he leads us besides water. The Bible is very particular in what it says. It says still waters. So these are not dangerous waters. I've been whitewater rafting before, and you know what? Sometimes it's a little bit scary. So there's some scary water, but this is not scary water. In fact, if you go to Niagara Falls and you look at that, it's a bit, it's beautiful, but it's, it's a little scary thinking about what happens if I fall in. These are not those kind of water. They're still waters. They're beautiful waters. They're tranquil waters, if you will. These are the waters you sit beside on a beautiful sunny day with a picnic lunch, the breeze blowing. You, you can picture this wonderful, beautiful picture. So visualize it this way, if you will. The Bible's talking about a shepherd, which makes me think about sheep. Think about, I love this, a pleasantly plump sheep with no cares, no worries, comfortably at rest and entirely taken care of. Everything it could possibly ask for is right there for its taking. It's a beautiful picture. Understand this. For you sitting there today, this is exactly, this is exactly the life that God wants to give you. This is exactly the picture that God wants us to live like. It's beautiful. It's exquisite. It is something that every single person I believe in the entire world wants, strives for, longs for, is that comfort, that beautiful picture. Now, let me ask you this question. How many of you would be able to say that you are living that life every single day of your life? Pastor Yeomans, every single day I'm in green pastures. Every single day the breeze is blowing and there's the sun shining down and my friends and my family are all around me and I'm this pleasantly plump sheep, if you will. Probably not a whole lot of you are saying, yep, right today I'm living that every moment. Probably not. So does this mean that God is a liar? Does this mean that Psalm 23 is a lie? Does this mean that, that because we don't experience this every single day of our lives that something is wrong? Well, I want to give you number two, and it's this, the burdening possibility. The burdening possibility. We've seen a beautiful picture, but there's a possibility. I want you to see verse four. The Bible says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Verse 5, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. I want you to notice a couple things here. There's a possibility of walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I want you to notice the second thing, that there is a possibility of being in the presence of your enemies. This is the exact opposite of the picture I had from the first three verses. We, we, we've explained the first picture, tranquil, beautiful, exquisite. But this second picture does not give me a wonderful picture. I picture it dark, even gray and gloomy. Jagged rocks, and you're starting to walk through this valley. Rocks on either side. In fact, it, it's, the grass is extremely scarce. The only grass that's growing is dried up and, and disgusting. It's barely sticking up between the rocks. It's dry. It's dusty. In fact, as you walk through this valley, and this, you begin to see wolves popping up from behind the rocks, standing up, beginning to lick their lips, ready to pounce when that opportunity is right. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not the same picture that I had in the first one. It doesn't give me that light, jovial, carefree feeling. It's as if there's this huge weight placed upon me, and there's this anxiety and this struggle in my stomach. I'm guessing that that's where some of you find yourself right now. Some of you find yourself not in the bright, sunny picture, but in the dark, gloomy picture a place where you're maybe scared about your circumstances. 
I've had two conversations this week with people that are scared, afraid about their current circumstances. And I'll be honest with you, in my heart of hearts, I'm scared of what could happen. I'm scared of the possibilities of what could go on. In fact, this is my personality as a kid. I remember laying in bed at night. My parents had put us to bed. They always prayed with us, and they always uh, um, told us that they loved us, and they put us to bed. And I remember laying there, and I would literally cry myself to sleep, worrying, what if my parents died? What would I do? How, how would I go through my life without them? And I would lay there and literally cry and tears would stream down my face. And I'll be honest enough to tell you this, that it has crossed my mind. What would I do if my family contracted the coronavirus? It has crossed my mind. I don't know. I'm honest. I'm being honest with you. It scares me. It's a weight on my shoulders. And I'll be honest, again, I pray every night, God, keep us safe. Every night. So understand that though there is a beautiful picture, there's a burdening possibility. There's this possibility of, of something bad happening, and it, and it scares us, and it makes us afraid. But I want you to notice the third point with me, if you will. The bountiful provision the bountiful provision. Again, look with me in verse five. Watch this now. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, but watch, he doesn't even stop there. My cup runneth over. So even in the presence of your enemies, God will uh, uh, prepare for you a bountiful table, a bountiful for provision. We spent some time on this last Sunday, and I hope you understand this. If you haven't gotten this yet, please understand. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter uh, what position you find yourselves in. You find yourself in that gray picture, or if you find yourself in that sunny, beautiful picture, it doesn't matter where you find yourself. God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient. So you can be in the middle of your enemies. You can be surrounded by them on every side. And if you read any amount of the Psalms, you can understand that. You can see many times David saying, they're surrounding me on every side. But in the middle of that, in the middle of your enemies, God can prepare a table for you. God can prepare something, a bountiful table. And if you will, a cup running over table. Look at the end of that verse. Uh, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over Malachi 3.10, we looked at this verse last week, but again, listen, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, watch this, that there shall be not be enough room to receive it. That there shall not be room enough to receive it. Understand, God wants to pour out a blessing, and he can, in no matter what circumstance you are, so much so that you can't even contain it. You can't handle it all. It'll be so many blessings. Now, I don't know everybody that's watching here today. I don't know if you are experiencing this blessing right now. I have no idea if you can see the blessings of God in your life right now. I know I can see some, I can see some things and God is doing, but I have no idea if you're counting your blessings. No idea. But I want you to know this. God wants to provide for you bountifully, even in the midst of your major trials, even in the midst of what's going on. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my name. In the presence of my trial, God can prepare a table for me. God wants to show you that his grace is sufficient for you. His grace can provide for you. Now, you might be saying this, Pastor Yeomans, this is all wonderful. It's all great. But how does this help me right now? I'm, I'm honestly, I'm worried. I, I'm fearful. I'm, I'm a little afraid, and I'm even weighed down by that. And you might even say, sure, I see God's provision. I see God's uh, hand working. But what if that's all taken away from me? 
What, what if what I assume and see as God's blessing, what if that's stripped from me? How, how do I experience the first three verses of Psalm 23? How do I experience that beautiful picture that God wants me to partake in? Because honestly, some of us are not there. Some of us are not in a position where we're like, yeah, right now, currently in my life, I'm experiencing this sunny, blissful, Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want kind of day. How, how do I do this? I want to show you my fourth and final point, and that's this, the blessed presence. The blessed presence. Look with me in verse four. We talked about this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Here it is. For thou art with me. You're with me. The presence of God was with David. The presence of God. He didn't fear because of his presence. If you're in the habit of writing stuff down, write this down, please. When the presence of God moves in, the problem of fear moves out. When the presence of God moves in, the problem of fear moves out. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 18, the Bible says this, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Why? Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. The Bible tells us in another place in 1 John that God is love. Listen, perfect love, which if you will, you can, you can take that any way you want. But if, if, if we're getting into the definition of God is love, God is perfect love. So there is no fear in the love of God. There is no fear in the presence of God. Look at this entire passage again, Psalm 23. Look at the entire thing again. And I want to point out to you the presence of God in the entire passage. Check it out with me. Look at verse one. The Bible says this, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Again, here it is. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. I love this. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want to be in his presence forever. And when you do, goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life. At least 10 times in this passage, at least 10 times in this passage, David refers to God. God being present, God being there, God being able so I want you to understand this. You may not be experiencing these wonderful sunny days. You may be in this gloomy cloud, but understand this. The key is God in all of this. The key is God. I want you to take your Bibles over with me to John chapter 14. John chapter 14 and verse 25. John chapter 14 and verse 25. The Bible says this. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Verse 27, watch this. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You see, Jesus wasn't going to be on this earth forever. But he says there in verse 26, he's going to send a comforter. A comforter. And when the presence of that comforter comes, when the presence of that comforter is there, he says in verse 27, now peace I leave with you. 
this comforter brings peace. So when the comforter is present, there is peace. So when God, again, is present, when the presence of God moves in, the problem of fear moves out. When the presence of God moves in, the problem of fear moves out. Now, again, I hope you're asking this question. How, Pastor Yeomans? How do I experience this peace, this tranquility? How do I allow the presence of God to move in? How do I allow the presence of God to move in? I'm sure every one of you that is is watching here today has been scared by someone coming through a room or a different thing and somebody scares you. They're there and you didn't know it. That's why you're scared because you, they were there, their presence were there, but you didn't uh, know that. I do this a lot of times with my wife. She's kind of jumpy. And so she'll be upstairs maybe putting laundry away or something and I'll come home from work for lunch or something and I'll sneak up the stairs and I'll just stand in the doorway and she's working away, and she has no idea that I'm there. I won't make any noise, nothing. And then all of a sudden, she realizes something's wrong, and she looks up, and she jumps every time, and she's usually super happy about it. That's not true. She hates it when I do that. But I want you to understand this. The same is true with everything. There are times when God's presence is with you. In fact, if you're saved... You know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior. God has said this, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And in fact, in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20, the Bible says, Jesus says, and lo, I am with you always. So the fact of the matter is this, God's presence is always near us. Just like me up on the stairs, my presence was near my wife, but you know what? She just didn't realize that I was there. So let me ask you, Why do we still fear? If God's presence is always with us, and Pastor Yeomans, you said that when the presence of God moves in, fear goes out. So why am I still afraid? Why am I still fearful? We still fear in the presence of God because we concentrate on the problem instead of the presence of God. The presence, we still have fear in the presence of God because we concentrate on the problem instead of the presence of God. Let me illustrate with, for you. Matthew chapter 14 tells us a story about a huge storm that had come up on the Sea of Galilee. The storm was tossing the ship around, and the men in the ship were fighting hard to keep the boat afloat. They were fighting hard to keep it going in the right direction. The Bible uses this term, the wind was contrary. So they're trying to go one direction, and it's forcing them a different way, and it's rocking back and forth, and they just don't know what to do, and they're, I'm sure they're scared. All of a sudden, they look up on the horizon, and they see a man walking on the water. And they're scared by that, and they soon find out that it's Jesus walking on the water. Do you know what Jesus was doing? Jesus was calmly walking over the storm didn't seem to phase him at all. Peter figures out that it's Jesus. And he asks Jesus, he says, if it's thou, bid me come unto thee. And Jesus says, well, come on. So Peter gets out of the boat and literally begins walking on the water. This is so exciting to me. It would be such an amazing thing to do. Now he too is experiencing peace in the middle of the storm. There's waves going on around him. I mean, things are clashing. The wind is blowing, yet he is walking on the water. The entire time, Jesus, excuse me, Peter was looking at Jesus. He was watching him, kept his eyes focused on him, and he began to walk and walk and walk on the water. But there was a moment There was a moment when his eyes began to drift and he began to look around and he began to see, if you will, the problem. And he took his eyes off Jesus. And in that moment, he began to sink. In that moment, he began to sink because Peter was no longer focused on Jesus. He was no longer focused on the Son of God. Let me ask you this question. Did the presence of God ever change in this story? No. 
Peter's focus changed. If you were to look up this story, you would see that the storm didn't stop just because Peter's focus was on God. The storm kept going. The storm kept blowing. Everything kept happening. But his focus was on God, and he walked on the water. In fact, it didn't stop until they got back in the boat, and Jesus calmed the storm. Understand this. The storms are going to come. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Storms are going to come. The problems are going to be there. But what makes a beautiful picture is our concentration, our focus on the presence of God. The entire 23rd Psalm is a reflection of David's focus on the presence of God. It didn't matter what he was going through. It didn't matter where he was. It didn't matter if it was a difficult situation. He kept looking at God. And every time he looked at God, there was peace, there was tranquility. I want to illustrate with a personal story, and I'll be finished. We were riding on a plane uh, to Israel, and I have not been on a lot of planes. I've only, I think, been on one or two before that. And up until this point, I had never experienced turbulence ever. I mean, if, it, if we did, I didn't notice it. And so we're beginning to uh, go on this flight, and Pastor Stone, the, our former pastor here at Bible Baptist Church, was riding next to me. And I remember watching him during this whole thing. He's done a lot of flying. He's been to Israel several times, so he understands what turbulence is. And I remember one lady screaming. And all I thought was, if Pastor Stone doesn't get nervous, then I'm okay. There was peace in his presence because he had been there. He had done that so many times. He, I, to my knowledge, if he got nervous, he never showed it to me. And so I never got nervous because I was in the presence of somebody who'd already gone through it. Can I give you this? You might be in a current situation today. Let me ask you, where's your focus? Is your focus on the problem or is your focus on God and the presence of God? You might be sitting there today not even knowing who God is, not even knowing his presence. Can I again encourage you today to reach out to him? Reach out to him today and just say, God, I don't know you, but I want to know you. Where's your focus? In the midst of everything that's volatile all around us, where's your focus? What are you concentrating on? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for this opportunity that we have. Father, I pray today that you would be our shepherd, that we would concentrate on you, that we would see your will in your way in our lives, and that everything that is said and done in our lives would be something that you would be pleased with. And Father, that we would lean upon you, that we would see you in every area, and that no matter what happens, we would have that peace, that tranquility. Father, we'll give you the glory for it. I pray for each person that's sitting here this morning, listening. Father, I pray you give them the same. Help them to see you in a new light. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to give you again a chance to reflect on today's message. And I'm going to ask you to welcome the presence of God back into your life. I'm going to ask you to refocus on God today. And again, perhaps maybe in your life you've pushed him out. You, you, maybe because of busyness, maybe because of a hurt, or maybe because of fear. You said, no, I don't want you in my life anymore. Can I give you this? God has not left. He's still with you. He is still there. Can you just take some time right now to see him again? We're going to give you a moment to do that. The piano's going to begin to play. We're going to take a moment to do that.
hope you've spent some time re realizing the presence of God in your life. If you have any questions, I want to uh, encourage you, please, please reach out to us. You can do that through any social media, messengers, uh, Instagram, uh, uh, direct message, or anything like that. We can do email, we can do telephone, text, anything. Please reach out to us. And if you have any questions about uh, knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Again, we want to encourage you to do that. Please reach out to us. If you have any questions, there's a resource page uh, on our website. There's also um, a salvation page on our website so you can know more about that. If not, reach out to us. We'd love to have you. Our trio is going to sing again that song, I Surrender All. Sing with us if you will. Thank you so much for joining us this morning online, and we hope that you enjoyed that service be a challenge to you and a comfort to you in these troublesome times. Uh, we do want to thank you for that. If you're not a regular at Bible Baptist Church, we'd love to hear from you either through the comment section here on Facebook, or you can click the link below to connect with us. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, our church has always been and will always be a gospel-centered church that believes that Jesus Christ is the only hope of salvation, and we want to share that with you. One of our uh, slogans, one of our models here is that we're sharing Christ, sharing hope with the community, and we're here to share hope with you. So please connect with us, and we'd love to hear from you uh, if you have any questions or any concerns about that. Let me also let you know that tonight, uh, Pastor Levi will be going live on Instagram with our teenagers, and that's on the Upstream Instagram account page. And so if you are available to that, we'd love to have you come. Teenagers, adults, you're welcome to come over as well. Uh, Pastor Levi and Aloma do a great job with that. Uh, many of you have asked about uh, giving to our church. We know these are uh, tough economic times, and so if you're struggling uh, and, and having a hard time, we'd love to be a help to you if we can. Uh, but also, if you want to give, there are several ways to do that. We have an e-transfer option. We also have other options. So just contact us, one of our staff members, uh, either email us or contact us directly. We'd love to help you with that, uh, with your giving as well. Also, this week, every night, 7 o'clock, we'll be on our Facebook uh, account, live at 7, we call it. And so please uh, watch those things, look at our, our email list, look at our Facebook for updates. We have some different things going on. We're going to try to connect with our groups uh, through Zoom. And so we have some new things going on with that this week. But uh, every night this week, we have some things going on, devotionals. Uh, we're hoping to have a game for everyone on uh, Tuesday, stuff for the kids on Thursday, so different things. So please take advantage of all that. One more thing uh, before we close our service, and that is as soon as this service is over, we're going to be live on Facebook with a virtual lobby. We tried it last week. We're going to do it again. So our staff will be there uh, to meet you, to answer your questions, to have you comment on the message, to uh, uh, just interact. We'd love to have you meet us there. So as soon as this is uh, this. Um, this uh, service ends, meet us over on Facebook Live. We'll be there to greet you and to meet you, all right? And so at this time, we have our trio to come. They're going to sing for us one more time as we close the service this morning. from heaven. 